ever imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously and every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light. Total Protonic Reversal. Protonic Reversal. Protonic Reversal. With your host, Conan Neutron. Broadcasting from a secret underground lair in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. A gigantic middle finger to everything that is rock about music, rock and roll, and silver power. The thing is, though, if you don't laugh, you're going to go on a killing spree to shop and make it. Confidence of a hero or a fool. I wasn't exactly certain which. Could not be more professional. It's so real world. I choose to go my life to. That's okay. It means something. It means something. Yeah, you know, that's my take. What's yours? Protonic reversal. That's like a science thing, right? Indeed, 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 it is. It is a science thing. It is a science place. It is a scientific fact. Then we were all up in your face. It is time once again for the one, the only. Protonic Reversal. Welcome to it. Welcome to it. And also, additionally, welcome to it. A uh, very special guest today, the legendary Mr. Mark Stewart. Uh, you may know him from the pop group, uh, Mark Stewart and the Mafia. You may know uh, his prodigious solo work, including a, a awesome new record. A new record that uh, we're going to get into. It's it's going to, this is going to be a fun one to talk about, I think. Uh, of course, Mark's a legendary musician. Uh, not just from the pop punk, uh, pop punk, post punk <laughs> era, which is a meaningless term. What's let's, let's post punk, uh, but a has continued to write incredible music and release incredible music since then. So I'm very excited to talk to Mr. Mark Stewart about all of that. So uh, before we get into that, uh, this of course is Coda Neutron's Protonic Reversal. I am your host, Coda Neutron. Uh, I'm a rock and roll lifer who has toured and recorded for over 22 years. Most known for the band Kona Neutron, The Secret Friends. Music is a huge part of my life, and I use the format of this very long-running podcast to talk about music with musicians whose work I enjoy and respect. Folks that may or may not be household names, but do something very special. This is episode 285. If this is your first time listening to the show, or watching the show, or however you consume it, all the archives are protonicreversal.com and are always free. No ads, no sponsors. No kidding. If you'd like to support the show and get episodes sooner, you can give $1 a month to patreon.com slash Protonic Reversal. And if you like the show, even a single episode, please feel free to share it along, like, subscribe, or post a review. All that helps people find the show, and it's it's just a darn nice thing to do, really. Okay, so we're going to be talking with Mark shortly. I'm very excited for this. This is, um, this is a special Sunday Quarantimes edition. Quarantimes and also allowing for time zones such as Greenwich Mean Time, which if you listen to, you know, the world time zone authorities and whatnot, uh, that is the only time zone. But most people do not feel that way that are in the U.S. Because, of course, we don't. Uh, anyway, so we're going to let's listen to something from Y to start us off. And, uh, yeah, then we'll be back with... Uh, Back with Mr. Mark Stewart. Right, right, wrong. Like a dancing flame 
And we're back, hopefully, with Mr. Mark Stewart. Mark, are you with me, man? He's not here. No, no, he's out. He's out. <laughs> no, call try again later. Ring you later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on the toilet. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair I'm enough. Having, I'm having my nails done, dude. <laughs> right. I'm washing my hair that day. What is it? When is it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so nice to have you, man. Thank you so much for, for being Thank on you. the show. Uh, we just heard... I'll just charitably call it an unexpected uh, rock block of pop group jams, uh, which <laughs> timeless music. It was so. overwhelming. It's, uh, the funny thing about those tracks is suddenly a, a song you wrote when you were like 15 or 16, the lyrics mean something when you hear it in a certain week. Yeah, absolutely. Like, however, <laughs> years later, it's beyond, it's, be, it's, it's madness. I, that is something that I kind of wanted to, and, and uh, of course, one of the reasons why you're here is is for your your brilliant um, new record. I want to talk about that, but I, I want to talk about the idea of, so the way that we have the, the internet now, where everything is instantly available, there's a whole new generation of people that are experiencing everything for the first time. So there's a younger generation that hears something like the pop group, and they hear it from a modern context, and they're like, oh, yeah, this is great. And one of the nice things I feel, especially about why doesn't really sound dated like some other records that I will not speak of from around that time. But you have people experiencing something that, you know, what, what were you like, 17 or something when that record yeah. came out? Yeah, 17. <laughs> and you have like people that are like 17 now vibing with it as if it was happening in real time. It's like time travel in a way, I would imagine. Right? Yeah, it is like time travel. And there's this, there's this idea that I was... It's, I'm into this idea of quantum sense, and there's some idea that UFOs are sentient AIs coming back from the future. 
And for me, time is it's non-linear anyway. But yeah, but it's cool. It's cool. But it's kind of but I I was exper- I was listening to like Dion and the Belmonts. You know, I was oh, listening sure. to like stuff from the 1940s. So the thing catches you of the moment. But what's weird, really weird to me, like I was just saying, is my own. It's like I'm. I was writing a letter to my future self, right. and we put out this <laughs> Y and Dub last year, and just hearing some of these words cut up coming across to me, perhaps I didn't know what I was. They've got meaning for me now, which which gives me some sort of solace that maybe I'm scrying in the right direction. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, I always felt that uh, not just the pop group, but all your music is very future forward. Like it's not it's not uh, past past gazing past gazing nostalgia it is it isn't like nostalgia music in any way shape or form yeah and the whole point i don't i think i've got a funny feeling that this new one that you're one of the first people to get i think i'm not sure if it's going to be understood now because it's so full on and it's like got some so many crazy people involved but it's kind of it's what i'm into and it, it's it's my idea of doing new alchemy for future preceding the future right i mean I, I don't know if people will understand it totally now, but I think hopefully in years to come, it will it will be of some use, you know, as a tool. I don't know, you know. Well, and I think that's, you're, you're, so you're dead on with that. And first of all, the idea of, and I guess we, we're, we, we can let the audience in on the conversation as well, that <laughs> it's, it, it's a record, of, it's called Verse, Versus, right? Well, it's VS. It's, it's, it's the, the abbreviation. Versus, versus yeah. yeah. V, VS is short for Versus. It's like Mothra versus... Godzilla, Godzilla. <laughs> right? Exactly. Which speaking my language, when you talk like that. Uh, <laughs> you look a bit like a wrestler. <laughs> exactly. It's it's Ricky what? Flair versus a British bulldog. Yeah. I, and I was. It's, it's funny because I always think of the. Uh, uh, I, I, I quite like the band Sparks, and they made that record with Franz Ferdinand, and uh, the first song is "Collaborations Don't Work," which is uniquely Sparks uh, for the for their oh, sense of humor. Cool. I love Sparks. I, I was thinking about them just now. We did a with the Mafia. I did a. a a gig at the cat club in new york and i i could see across the room that ron mail was sat there and the last time i'd seen him oh my god was i was waiting outside of one of his gigs when i was 12 to get a autograph you know so weird and like so those things and like standing next to bowie or something i nearly wet myself in those sorts of situations anyway carry on no no sir i mean like they're I don't know. Did you see that documentary that Edgar Wright did uh, this last year? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. I hear it's good. It's, it's, it's beautiful. And it's beautiful in the way, here's how I would describe it. It's beautiful in a way that if you have ever been an artist or, uh, or, and, or the art that you like is maybe not mainstream, just to see it all laid out like that. So beautifully and so artistically done. It's a fantastic director. Uh, I don't think you actually need to even, know or care about sparks to enjoy it it's kind of for all of us to a certain degree and i think that that's, that's yeah. really wonderful <clears throat> yeah so they, they 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 yeah they they open doors to other galaxies and 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 it's it's i just saw some call out on the internet for artists and whoever to kind of rise up and start us you know start forming opinions for a new future you know it's quite it's quite interesting times anyway well let's get back to verses so so sorry that was a derivation about uh sparks as happens derivation <laughs> i haven't heard i haven't heard that word in a music interview god you don't look so into oh well the bow tie you asked the tweed jacket slightly intellectual chaps <laughs> he's got one of the downliner sex hat, hats on <laughs> the most loquacious uh, music interview show in the internet. <laughs> oh, no, he's doing it off. You got spit all over the microphone. <laughs> loquacious. Come truly. on, we're meant to be punk rock. We're not meant to read books, dude. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Fair. <laughs> uh, can you? So let's talk about. I verses. can feign. I can feign ignorance. It's it, it, it's fine. We 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 can celebrate the high brow, the low brow, and everything in between. In, on, on the, the motto brow, in my yeah, case, the, the oasis. <laughs> Well, let's talk about versus because this this is a this is an album of collaborations. It's very unique. It was, wouldn't be, I don't know exactly what people would expect, but I think it's it, there's some cool kind of surprising paths that you take down. Was this something? Did you have this idea pre-pandemic or uh, to, to do it this way? Yeah. Well, Mika from Vino from Panasonic, he died. Yeah. <laughs> a couple of years ago, so it's kind of like, yeah. I mean, this is my, this is what I do. You know, and it's kind of, I just kind of collect people, bump into like KK Noel, 
I loved since Zenny Given. I I loved that whole Jap oh, noise scene going so way amazing. back to like high rise, and you know, I, I you know, I just loved it. And we got him to open for the pop group in Tokyo, and I got on with him really well. And it ended up that he was a fan, so we just started swapping ideas, you know. And Mike Watts has been a fan since time. He got what he was. He's in this film that was made about me, and he got me into interview Iggy for this film. Blah 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 blah. So it's all kind of mates to a certain extent suddenly right. I, I i hooked up with consolidated who i've admired from a distance for a long time it's 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 a wish list it's the sort of certainly it's the sort of people i'd play at a party i mean nobody would come but i jump about <laughs> to that yeah. i mean oh. look you got you got kk null you got consolidated that's uh, that's my kind of party my man that, that's yeah <laughs> well and and i'm glad you brought up null because Zinigiva, th- that's a band that true heads will know, is what is what I usually say yeah. about Zinigiva, and that is a band that you can, uh, you, it, it must, it, it, you must respect what they do, because it is so forceful and they're so <laughs> unique of purpose to what they do that it's it's quite extraordinary. <laughs> I wish you said that about me. I'm jealous now. No, no. <laughs> well, but it's so. What I was the next thing I was about to say is to me, it's it's. We, we, there's a saying. Of, uh, well, we get it from the wire. Game respect game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And that's and that yeah. seems like the perfect pairing of. of well, I'm uh, trying to raise the game. I'm trying to raise the game. I am this. I am really trying to na- raise the game. I, I and appreciate to use that. a crap kind of advertising. For me, this is bleeding edge, and I'm not. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to stoke my own fire, but. I'm out there and I'm not coming back. Follow me if you want. I've got a torch, I think. Do you know what I mean? I'm not sure where I'm going, but I'm I'm out there. I'm going. But you'll let us know when you <laughs> the get there. It was lifted off. I, well, and I think that that's, that's so key to me because it would be very easy, I feel, it would be very easy to make a record that sort of meets expectations of what people think that they know from you, right? Like, let's, yeah. like have like the, 20, the 2022 version of why. For instance, right? right? Like what some would... of this stuff I did with our new sound, or sort of, you know, I'm doing some stuff with some reggae guys at the moment. You yeah, know, Jamaican. Yeah, but that's not. Yeah, but it's that's it's not all, where you you're know, going. Though. I'm not doing anything for the. It's just stuff I like. It's stuff that gets me. You know, I pogo around the house on a bit. Like you know, I get hyper excited about certain things, and I've tried to funnel it all into and and make it. What is it? I heard you can get your ashes made into a into a diamond to put on a ring or something. Yeah. I've tried to do tried to compress all this stuff into like as full on text as I can make. I mean, I'm not saying it's music. <laughs> no, but it's, but it's, it's your, your, you're doing something. It's my brain. It's, yeah. I'm ripping diamonds out of my, it's, it's, yeah, it's my, my brain and my, and, and, and my friends and collaborators brains. And thank God for ye gods, right? I came across him from a tip off from the Aphex twin and these people have cheered me up so so much that uh, there's a younger generation of nutters out there, you know. <laughs> Absolutely, and yeah. in America, <laughs> kids are really picking up on mad sounds, and I love it. I, and I think that that's so. So when I think of, you know, whether you call it punk rock, DIY, freak music, however you want to define it, or if you if you wanted to find it at all, I, I find it disappointing personally when things kind of shift into a museum. If that makes yeah. sense, and, and it, I was thinking about your this, this all of your works, all, all the various records, and, and while there's definitely stuff that be, you know would belong in a museum for notability's sake, you, that's never been you. That's never been you. That's never been anything that you've done. You're always uh, you know almost burning the past for fuel to a certain degree, and, and I and I love yeah. that. Yeah, well, that's one of my some Japanese some Japanese uh, writers said that. Memories are fuel that we 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 burn to to light the future. You know. Oh my God, that's that's incredible. <laughs> yeah, and that's so. This is very vital. Like, what is what I'm getting at? Like, this is a very vital uh, collaboration, and not necessarily something that people would expect, but that maybe they didn't know they needed it. And, and when you're when you're putting something like this together, because I think. And, and I'm swear I'm going some, somewhere with this, but like when you did the dub, <laughs> you know more than me. I'm the, the, the dub. <laughs> we two step backwards. Well, when you did, you the... when... do you know where you're going to? Do but... you know the life is showing you? Where are you going to? 
do you know you got freebie there dude yeah yeah that's good that's that's an exclusive i'll take it uh <laughs> when you did the dub why right that makes so yes. much sense because dub is so important to me to what and i didn't understand this when i first heard the pop group but i think feel like dub is so important to understanding the pop group and understanding those records yeah and, but to a certain degree like that makes sense as a hey everybody's revisiting this record and it's maybe like getting the chance through the algorithm somehow to be heard uh by a new audience but here's also something you may not know that you know away from context like there wasn't an aspect of of dance music to like aggressive music punk rock whatever what have you and i loved that i thought that was such i thought that was the coolest re-envisioning of of kind of going back to the roots that were maybe for whatever reason not as acknowledged by the you know main mainstream media or whatnot and it is it, it was cool it was a cool record and unexpected in a way that i that i think i would like to see more of in the world yeah yeah and it's kind of a heresy i mean i was reading something they found some velvet underground recordings at, at like a is it a yard sale you call it in america right right <laughs> yeah i find it quite weird when people go back and do, it's like, it's, well, it's a bit like Dada. It's like drawing a mustache on, on the Mona Lisa or something. It's quite heretical, right? But, you know, I've got this, I constantly try and flip the script and do what I think I shouldn't do. Go against my, even my own intuition. Do you know what I mean? Which I find, which is, which is, it, it's hard. You have to freeze yourself and stop. It's, it's quite a weird way of working. It's difficult to eat. Yeah, well, it's not. It's not a recipe for financial yeah, success. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, you're. you're not, I mean, you're not going to make tons of money at it. <laughs> and that's for noodles, dude. <laughs> but but this it's is the cookery show, right? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So what's what's your recipe for pasta? Yeah. No, uh, <laughs> I I think that it's notable to me though that uh, I, it, so it's the artist path, right? That that that's the that's the best way to put it, and you can. For me, it's more the path. It's more the it's more the path of the Zen master. I mean, I don't like the idea of artist. Okay, fair they enough. got a saying in Bali: "We have no art; we do everything well." I, I really question, and I'm so pleased when I'm away from people who claim or think that they're artists. You know, I'm not, <laughs> you know, opinionated. You know, I don't get it. I'm not being rude, but you know, and I, I I've ended up doing these things because I can't stop doing them. But trying to say that they have any importance is beyond me you know well the, yeah the, so the idea of doing doing it because you have to because you have something kind yeah. of burning and Post itching top. in your brain right yeah uh, branded so uh well I, and I, I guess i brought it up this casually as, as a point but uh so let's let's talk quickly about the if you can about the dub the dub why i think that that's like was that just a hey wouldn't it be cool if dot 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 that kind of came to reality was it more planned out well the funny thing is suddenly we got the master tapes back from warner brothers you know because the label we there wasn't really rough i was sharing a house with jeff at the time jeff travis and R rough trade hadn't even been set up and luckily we we signed to a sort of a label that had some independence set up by this guy who set up ua and it was great they really looked and it was we had total freedom but um Anyway, we got the tapes back. It ended up that it was owned by Warner Brothers, right? We got the tapes back, the master tapes. And I remember a couple of years ago, me and Gareth opened the box, and it was the first time we'd seen them since putting them in the box when we left the, these this Ridge Farm Studios. Right. And we got digitized, and we and we and we we started hearing the original versions, and we did a deluxe edition of Why, and we put on the original untouched versions before we dubbed them and overproduced them, which were the versions we were sort of playing live as we got into the studio. It... Oh, I think I lost you for a second, Mark. You still there with me? Mark Stewart. Yeah, there we, go. We, were, we were working with Dennis again anyway. And we, Dennis produced a um, a new album we made called Honeymoon on Mars. Right. And I said, oh, we should get Dennis to dub it, right? But yeah, yeah. using exactly, not using any techniques we wouldn't have used back in the day because we didn't have the time to do the dub back in the day. And it's come out really, you know, I'm really, really pleased with it. And again, it's, it's, it's pushing um, envelopes that I think should be pushed. It's so important in life to keep on 
breaking out of what you 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 think you are. You know, I've got this saying that faith is the room for doubt. You've, you know, I'm constantly trying to challenge what I'm, what I think I am, what I think I'm doing, what I think this is for, what what a screwdriver's for. You know, it may sound a bit mad, but that's me. Right. Well, and it it showed a different side of those songs in the band and, and very clearly yes. showed that, that it, which by the time that, you know, for myself, by the time I got to a record store, I was like, Oh, okay. So they were, they were listening to these kinds of records and this was their lens yeah. through that, et cetera, et cetera. But for someone that doesn't have that frame of reference, it's a very immediate thing. Well, for, and let's put it clearly, the songs still work. Exactly. <laughs> and, and a lot of people, some really crazy like DJs are suddenly playing them in their sets oh, and they don't even know our stuff. So, oh, brilliant. Okay. Yeah. I know these things become, I call it like a cargo cult. They become unhinged or untethered and then they become something else and they mate with something else and a mutant arrives. You know, I know I, you cannot control who your children breed with. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> well, and, and it, it's. Or what planet they, 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 they escape to. <laughs> right. Exactly. Where they colonize, where the, where the colony starts. <laughs> Uh, and I, th I, it's uh, it's amazing to me, too, that because I feel like so so for me, my path, and I feel like this is similar to a lot of folks' path is uh, maybe before Spotify and everything else, is that you heard like I found Wire first, right? I found Wire, and then quickly Gang of Four, and then the Birthday Party, and then later on I was like, oh, well, have you heard the pop group? And I'm like, what is that? And right. then then I then I checked it out, but Which it was people would say which pop yeah, group? Yeah. Yeah, exactly i'm like what do you, do you mean like uh the, uh, the like, bunkies yeah yeah dion like who are you talking about like uh, yeah, yeah. what is um four tops like yeah I, I know all the pop groups like no no the pop group it's like oh definitive article <laughs> <laughs> oh that must be good it's the pop group <laughs> So I've got this saying that in punk rock there was the, the arrogance of power, but we had the power of arrogance. You know, <laughs> we learned that from the pistols. Just come out all guns blazing. It doesn't matter if you don't know what you're doing. Just just pretend you're big. You know, you just do it. Yeah. Well, and it, it but it struck me that there was such clarity of purpose to the music, and I was like, wow, why isn't this as well known as these other records? And you know, there's a, there's a thousand shows that we could do based just on that. But it was it sounded very vital. It sounded very. It didn't sound like dated music or anything along those lines. And it just it expanded the idea that there's this entire other universe of bands that, uh, you know, beyond the ones that were the winners of, of that era, so to speak, uh, that that get to have their day what? in the sun. Yeah, it's not. It's not. You know, people say history's written about kings and queens. There's nothing. It, there, it wasn't a. It wasn't a competition. You know, but the craziest thing is how these things get out. You know, suddenly Kanye West is wearing a "She's Beyond Good and Evil" T-shirt, right? Right. Astounding. And he's he's a crate <laughs> he's a crate digger. He's really into medium medium. Who are this brilliant Manchester? Esther band, they're just those lads are just looking for beats, you know. Yeah, Drake is really into 23 Skidoo. <laughs> Amazing, yeah. Can you, it's crazy. I mean, it's just as crazy as me being into Cool Herc or you know, the Sugar Hill Gang. So, what you know, I like it, yeah. And I think that so that's a perfect example of uh, what was a Matt Groening, right? That that uh, it brought you guys, brought you guys out and was doing the thing of like, I have all these bands that I love and I'm going to bring them out to do a thing because I love these bands and it exposes yeah. to a new audience, which is great. Yeah. Did you know him uh, from before that? Like, did you know him from uh, when he was doing like life? And no, Hell? but hearing, hearing stories back, I did an interview that I think it was called the, I did an interview. I think it was from Rolling Stone. And this guy was saying he was friends with Matt when they were kids. And you hear these stories. It's like, Mike Watts was saying in a tiny little record shop when he was growing up, he saw the cover of Why, and he just thought, I've got to get that. Right. Right. Then I'm living in Berlin and I'm just trundling along doing my solo stuff and doing these art projects and stuff. I suddenly get a phone call from a guy who's helping to manage us, who managed, managed suicide and Robin Gristle at the same time. And Paul said, Matt Groening wants you to reform the pop, wants you to reform the pop group and Iggy to reform the Stooges for an ATP. I said, oh, right. You know, and immediately I thought, is that going to be necrophilia? Well, exactly, right? yeah. Because if you're going to do it, you want to make sure it's done in the spirit of... Well, 
But with that reaction, I just thought, well, you know, my thing is, first of all, and we've always been a real democracy, I wanted the other lads who maybe hadn't done as much since that bad band finish that I had to, to get the kudos and to get the chance to travel and go to Japan that I've always been doing all around the world, right? So there was that for it. It wasn't even for me to make the decision. But then there was the thing about if I think I shouldn't do something, I do it. <laughs> sure. No, and, and that's a great way to, to live a life, right? And the obstacle is the way. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And then so so you like how does how do those conversations go? Is everybody I mean, is somebody, you know, running like a a grocery store or something or other of course. Or... <laughs> you, can, you can see what yeah i've got i've got plantains all around me um yeah in, delicious in East Africa. yeah well that's but the we were all still mates anyway bristol is such a small place right that's the cool thing about it it's small it's so small that there can't be everybody kind of knows each other they know each other's uncles or brothers or sisters or whatever right and even if people have left we've still got those connections when you go home at christmas to see your folks or whatever we all still go to the same pubs or our little brothers do what now our kids do, you know? And it's like, we, we were always mates and I made it part of my point to fight for their copyrights and to protect right. the integrity of what we were standing for because punk and the whole DIY ethos was a political act in itself for me. And, you know, I'm just helping push this new film based on Simon Re Reynolds' book, Rip It Up, and that, for me, the politics of controlling the means of production and fighting censorship and doing exactly what you're allowed to do without some middle management person coming on saying, can you shave one eyebrow off? Right, yeah. It like, will sell records. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the autonomy of being able to control what you are trying to put out there and not have yeah. other people I know it that I can sit here and say something in exactly the way I want to say it, with whatever noise I went what round it, even if I don't really know what I'm saying half the time, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not preaching. I'm just throwing mad ideas that tickle my fancy that hour when I'm doing it, and it will get even the mastering. It will get you know this versus thing. I've spent so much time and effort, and even the the ethos of emergency hearts, which is like an anarcho crypto sort of setup in the states. You know the whole thing, as far as I can see, is virtually clean as to the person that's handing you over the... Because we're trying to punk up the internet now. We're really trying to... You know, Scott Crow runs the thing, is really trying to play the play the, play the the robots. You know, we're not going to be slaves to the algorithms. I'm really trying to make a sort of... A, a, you know, because it was built. You know, I know that Bitcoin and all that stuff... It came from cyberpunk. Cyberpunk came from what they called was industrial... There's right. a line from research yep. all the way through to the to the guys who are running or thinking about the future. I was just looking at these um, autonomous things on the blockchain, and it's pure pirate punk rock. And so much you of know. it comes from. I mean, and it's about it's about it's about freedom. Yeah. Uh, well, and so much of it comes from like you know, it was Wired magazine way back when, exactly. right? You know, it was <laughs> <laughs> the beginnings of. Boy, yeah. <laughs> the uh, EFF, the Electronic Frontier Foundation. You know, there's well, that is funny because I'm just doing a, we're just doing a thing with one of the singles, Ghost of Love. There's gonna, there's gonna benefit them. I can't tell you the ins and outs of it, but it's about this aut autonomous system on the blockchain. Anyway, that's that's next month. Yeah, F fantastic. But no, and and I love that. But can, can the, if we can, I want to get back to. I guess it was 2010, right? So it was about. I guess that was 12 years ago. Good lord, uh, that. You're getting back together with the guys, and obviously you're you're in each other's lives and however you are, but that's different from getting together and playing songs from what thirty years earlier. I mean, well, we definitely said first of all, everybody said we're not going to do it unless we can make some new stuff, right? Right. But we just got in and started jamming as we were now, and we came up with this track called "Citizen Zombie," which became the signature tune of the of the of the comeback album, if you will, which was totally different. And for, by, ch by chance, the biggest producer in the world who produces Adele and everything yeah. was a huge pop group with his phone project, Paul Epworth. And we, we got like to work in his new studio he'd just been building and he produced, you know, it's just madness, madness. The levels of cool people that are into that shit. Yeah, well, and that's, that's what, something that's been so cool to see 
again with the with these uh, ways of discovery for folks to find out about things is it, you, you never know who's listening right you never know who's out there no, you never know who's listening and you never know what position cool people are and it gives me hope for the for the for the planet you know yeah. that somebody way up in some wetware thing in japan or the head of gchq in england is is a punk rocker yeah and it's 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 humbling in that you know, way the for suits sure. are dying off the suits are dying off you know people with bright minds are in are in are in very strong positions nodal positions across the globe so but before so before that before uh uh before the the freaks rs era and and all that stuff and i want to get into that just that first getting back in the room to play with everybody for the first time is it does it just snap back immediately? Is there a no? Well, it's 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 not really about the whole point of punk rock was where'd you get those shoes? Mono <laughs> bro, taking the piss out of each other. It's th it's th three or four mates from youth club who used to just get in each other's face and take the piss, right? And some, and now you do, and then you picked up a guitar and you went right up to the singer's face with the guitars if you're going to hit him and just paid a really loud noise in his ear. It's the humor. It's you know, people did not read the pistols, the clash. It was it was it was it was leery, it was taking the piss. Yeah, and so you're you're sitting there with Gareth and uh, with Bruce, and it's just it is it just it's just like just like picking up like that, the you know yeah, what thing having a laugh like we've never been there before. You know, we always used to get Bruce to uh, you know, three o'clock in the morning. I'm getting Bruce to, to talk in a really high voice. I was going, I'm not gonna talk to you unless you talk in a really, really high voice. I'm sure when he plays with Johnny Rotten, Leiden doesn't do that. <laughs> so it's the fun of it. It's the fun of it. We trip somebody over, somebody really important from like a festival or somebody comes in or they sit on a whoopee cushion or we pee in their drink, you know. Yeah, and and it seems to me that there was always sort of a lively humor to what you were doing. Not that you were um not that you weren't <laughs> serious of the, of the of, with the music, don't get me wrong, but like, you know, a bit of the uh <laughs> like T taking it being serious about the music but like not taking like the the other aspects of it that maybe some folks take way too seriously you know uh, well, it's, of, naive, the it's playful it's childlike I mean, we learned that from seeing like ornette coleman and i met sun Ra when i was young you just realize these people are so ornette said something you have to learn everything to unlearn it you know and right. burroughs used to say or well, you know there's this thing of fl again flipping the flipping the thing you know it's it's this naivety and this and this and this preparedness to not do what's expected. And that's which that's, is cool. You know, somebody used to come on the stage with a garden hose and play clarinet <laughs> through a garden hose. You know, we just did why not? Why and wouldn't we just do back to the tapes <laughs> of why it's full of like they're these little children to toys and stuff. It's just and Dennis is Dennis Bavel is like a three-year-old, honestly. He needs like Ritalin or something. It's just like <laughs> we're just constantly laughing and taking having a laugh. And the and the and the hours go and you come out with something. And it's it's a pleasure, you know. But I do that even when I worked breaking boxes in a warehouse or or, or washing up, you know, you you I have a laugh if if you know, if we were stuck on a boat going across the Atlantic, you know, I, I'm having a laugh six o'clock in the morning. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But it, it also just strikes me that some of the stuff that maybe was just done for like, hey, let's try this out. Then you have people 25 years later, like, what effects pedal is that? What synth exactly, is that? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Bobby, Bobby, my friend from Primal Stream, was just saying to me earlier on, he's been he's become my lockdown buddy. We just chat about Joe Bryas and Ducks Deluxe and who have Bebop Deluxe. And he said, Mark, if only these people knew, you know, the the, the wire magazines, the studios, you know, studious librarian sort of interviews. I mean, I know that stuff. But he said, if only they he knew, they knew your sense of humor. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The, well, and it's it, it comes from for, for me, like a, a wild uh, disdain or disinterest. Disdain might not be might be wrong. Uh for norms, like like the fact that yeah, a disdain for authority. Yes, yes. That 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 is palpable. Uh, in the well, music. not even authority. Authority, assumed authority. Authority with no what I call devout ignorance. People that just put on some cape and think they're important. You know, <laughs> a cape makes you important, Mark. Do you not know that? <laughs> <laughs> just ask Dracula. <laughs> Hang on. He says, "No, no." <laughs> well, but it's my name is Dracula. Yeah. Oh, there's, oh God! Isn't there that French um, 
God, there was that French song. Vanessa, Vanessa, once bitten, twice shy. Vanessa disco song. Yeah, French yeah, one. yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. That's. I was thinking. Andy Warhol's Dracula, I liked with Joe Alexander. Yes, and, uh, yes, 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 yes. And then I was also thinking of Only Lovers Left Alive, uh, the Jim Jarmusch movie. Um, okay. That has the. Uh, it's like an Italian. You know, there's ladies singing Yalo, and dancing. What, Yalo or Italian, yeah. yeah, I can't I can't remember the name. This is a terrible derivation. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> but it's another it's, 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 all the didn't expect so much vampire related content talking to Mr. Mark Stewart, but here we are. Uh, but but then like look at so looking at that at that mindset, right? At that mindset and that way of like, hey, uh, you know, the Ramones, pistols great bands yeah. but that doesn't mean go sound exactly like those bands it means like take the no. idea of freedom and so punk was already happening we were we were my best friend four four houses up was in the bristol punk band called the cortinas and they'd started you know 14 just before punk when everybody was into dr feel good like the ox by the who <laughs> right. pretty things like r&b stepping stone the same stuff they had on the jukebox at sex the same stuff the pistols and the clash learned to play you know so we were ready before the thing broke out, we were all wearing like donkey jackets and stuff. And we were, you know, we were, we, it was, but, and then we saw a little tiny picture of the pistols and they were wearing the same mohair jumpers and pink pegs that I was wearing to the funk clubs. So I was, I was going up to London with my money from breaking boxes to buy clothes in there in, in Malcolm's shop, you know? Yeah. But so we were coming back from the Roxy and me and Bruce and Gareth were like best friends with, with, with the Cortinas, you know, they went to school with them. I went to school with them. And, um, we just said, well, why, why don't we ever go at this? You know, but we don't want to do, it wouldn't be punk to play punk. Right. So we just decided <laughs> right. to mix in what we were listening to in the clubs and in the in the blues dances and stuff. And, you know, this is what happened. Yeah, I mean, you got like, you, you guys, you know, brought in like the dubby bass and the sort of like free jazz and funky uh, yeah. rhythms. And in a yeah. distinctly unique way, even from other bands that were doing it. Uh, that you know, not that there were that many, but with it, there wasn't anybody. No, I mean the funny thing is, I'm not being rude. It was just, it was really that early. It was just us and kind of magazine, yeah, and playing around England. I remember Tony Wilson from Fact, who hadn't actually said Fact, who took a real love to us. And he had this little tiny club, the Russell Club, which he called the Factory, right? And he kept on putting us up in Manchester, and you could see people in the audience. Eric, who I'm collaborating, Eric Random, I'm collaborating with on two tracks on verses. He was going, him and Ian Curtis would come to the gigs. At the factory, you know, right? And they and 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 and, and uh, Thurston Moore said he came to see us in New York. We were in New York for like a month. We were like flavor of the month, you know, hanging out with Basquet and Keith Herring and blah 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 blah, whatever, you know. Oh yeah, whatever. Um, Average Tuesday, yeah. <laughs> and, um, Mark Stewart's uh, life. <laughs> came and saw us at Tier Three, and Gareth was like playing saxophone, rolling around like topless in this broken glass. And he said, "That's what made me want to form a band." So yeah. it was the same as us seeing the Pistols or Sparks or something. It's that alchemical snake. And now there's this most. Please play it if you can get it. It's the most amazing band that I found out about a week and a half, two weeks ago, called Benefits Band, who are like a Bristol Rovers version. I mean, they're not from Bristol, but they're as leery as Rovers fans. Nothing against City fans, obviously, um, of the Sleaford mods, but they are proper England. Interesting. Full on. Okay. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'm going to write that down. Thank and, you. But hearing people like that, again, I'm a, it makes me a fanboy again. And, and getting to hit play with ye gods, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a circle. Sometimes what you've inspired inspires you and that alchemical snake keeps on eating itself. Well, okay, so so two things I want to go with that. First of all, you invoke Sleaford Mods, which I only started listening to maybe a couple of years ago. And one of the first bands I thought of actually was the pop group when, when I heard Sleaford yeah, Mods. I did single with them. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. Good lads. The, the first thing I thought was, uh, was I just sort of started laughing because it sounded so sparse. And then I was like, oh, fuck me. These songs are really good. Like, this is this yeah. is awesome. But it just was like, oh, it's just like, there's like a single kind of not great sounding direct baseline and like this guy is just like going off the entire time but these songs like have hooks and i was like oh yeah kind of pop group style oh cool right on <laughs> that's how i got it um so it's again coming but back they're fucking, i mean i don't know about the mods but i chat I, I i reached out to these benefits people straight away and they didn't really know they don't they're young you know oh, they didn't even said, know. oh my dad saw the mothman years ago <laughs> supporting Alberto, he lost Trias Paranoia. And he said, when I typed in the Moth Mothman, the algorithm brought up Mark Stewart and the Mafia. That's and awesome. I thought, oh, well, how nice. You know, and he said, I've got to go off to my shitty job now. God, I don't know how old he is, but they didn't, they hadn't heard us. I mean, they 
sometimes people something just springs up it's like a weed in the garden it's they're not everybody isn't like a referencing something else it's just like when hip-hop blew up just two turntables and a microphone becomes the lingua franca you know right well exactly and and i think there's there's a difference now with i think back to for myself you know i'm I'm, I'm a little younger when i was was when i was in high school uh you know in, in the early 90s the metalheads and the and the punk rockers that wasn't like one world those were like factions that are on opposite sides of the school Right. And and everybody agreed on Motorhead. That was the one thing. Everybody agreed on Motorhead. Uh, But (laughs) but then and even among the people that like, quote unquote, punk, there was the the even smaller subsection of folks like myself. that were the freaks that were listening to like Sonic Youth and the birthday party and uh, and so on and so on. And that factionalization, I, I feel like the. The, if there's one nice thing about everything being available all the time, I feel like a lot of those borders have been broken down. People don't care about that anymore. They Hopefully. Don't. I mean, yeah, in theory. <laughs> I mean, my, the, the, my thing was I used to just buy, I didn't have a lot of money, right? And I, I used to buy stuff secondhand. Right. And in these sort of junk shops where we'd find records, it wasn't like a record store. They'd have some old clothes, some old electronics, some old... <laughs> books smelly bits of a motorbike or something right yeah and we just buy stuff because it was cheap or because the cover was weird so i'd buy like i'd find concrete music i'd find burt Campfar, you know yeah it wasn't they weren't putting genres in a trendy record shop i just pick up stuff or pick up a load of singles and clean them off you know so that kind of um disrupted any kind of uh stratification if you like do you know what i mean yeah yeah but, so so and that's what i wanted to kind of get at is that like if you're you know, without having these avenues of communication discovery and, and you're just like, Hey, this captain beef heart, what's that? You know? Oh, like what's, you know, what's, you don't what's judge this? it. You don't judge it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it kind of seems like that there's, I, I don't know if kids today like really have that uh, same hang up at all, but it, it's, it strikes me how extraordinary it was that what you guys did of, you know, like whatever, like elements of things that later would be in hip hop or like Nine Inch Nails yeah. or something along those lines, right? Like nobody was doing yeah. that. There was nobody doing that, even yeah. even amongst your amongst your well, peers. Again, and I'm not. This isn't a selling thing. I think I'm doing it on some of these tracks as well in a totally different way. I, I would mean, agree. Like, you know, you drill down. I know that Trent picked up on. You know, I've made an album called "As a Veneer of Democracy Starts to Fade," and supposedly Trent picked up on some stuff for like Nine Inch Nails and the other Owl and Ministry and whatever. People went off from the same track. People supposedly went off and did this and then the Bristol scene developed from, who knows? I'm not that bothered, you know, it's, it's not for me to judge. But again, it's, you know, it's it's all good. And to have people like, I mean, Nick's my mate, but to have like Nick Cave and Massive Attack bigging you up is... Of course, it's not bad. Isn't, you know, and for me, Massive Attack are like the ultimate post punk band. Yeah. And just because something's big doesn't mean it's not just as weird. I mean, some of their stuff and some of tricky stuff, some of, you know, it's Portis absolutely head. the weirdest shit. I was talking to Bobby. I mean, Psychedelic Furs, just because they got really big, they were still a really good, still a really interesting band early on. Yeah, and you too, that I will follow. You know, it's like pure Keith Levine, the guitar line. You know, people write stuff off because yeah. it's got on a film or something, but it doesn't matter, you know. Trent's doing Halsey now. He's producing a new Halsey album, and he's brought in my friend The Bug. Adrian's doing a mix on it. You know, Meat Beat Manifesto. It's all good. So, so well, and so, and there's many ways to go with that. But I think, to me, one of the first times I heard the pop group invoked was from the Minutemen, who are yeah, but- so unique and uh, iconoclastic in their way. And to have them, I mean, so you hear a band like that, that, I, there's of course there there's some influence, but they're also fellow travelers like coming from the same place. I mean, does that does that uh, enhearten you? Is that sort of like, oh, fantastic? Or or you know, what was your initial reaction to hearing the Minutemen, and when was that? I can't remember, and I, I I'm <laughs> not really. Uh, I mean, it was when they came out. It was right. when they came out. But I, you know, I, I'm useless with with times, dates, people's birthdays. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but Mike has turned into a really, really ah, good friend. What what an amazing human being! Yeah, uh, and well, Mike Watts and Ian Mackay, yes. right? 
from American friends are like this, the backbone, the stal stalwarts of the American independent scene. You know, they really hold that shit. I've got so much respect for Ian Mackay. I've been talking to him a little bit. I'd like to do something with him as well, you know. But it's like, you know, brilliant people, brilliant people. People don't, re people should, you know, people don't realise a lot of young bands, a lot of venues, you know, the work that, even the butthole surfers, you know, the work oh, that course. people did to set up infrastructures and to break down doors and to break down, I'd call it prejudices, you know. Yeah, it, it, it pays dividends down the line for people that may not even realize, uh, what's the Devo saying? Pioneers that got scalped? Is that is that the... Uh... That's the thing. <laughs> I've just got on an album with Devo, which will be great. Oh, fantastic. That, that's that's so good. Well, and and you, you mentioned Ian, you know, uh, and again, uh, most of these people we mentioned have been on this show before. Uh, Fugazi, another example of a band taking like dub influence and some of the stuff you guys in the pop group and taking it kind of a different way, which which is fantastic. Yeah. Totally. And pe for me, it was Perubu. We got to support Perubu <sighs> when we thought. And and David Thomas is a role model. I mean, he he, I you know, it made me happy to be gawky and like tucking yeah. all my clothes into my trousers. You know, it's just like. <laughs> I, I tried to be cool there, but I'm too tall to be cool. You know, me me and Daddy G from Massive Attack, we were too cool to be buy off the peg cool stuff. So we have to buy like big men's clothes to try and pretend they're cool, you know. Right, right, right. Exactly. You got you, you gotta you gotta what they call it swagger gorky. these days, right? <laughs> what was that they, the song Gorky Park? Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> well, and and Pierre was a perfect example of Dave Thomas is both someone that I would just absolutely love to have be in conversation with and also be like somewhat intimidated as well. Cause he's just so sharp. He's such a sharp guy. And, yeah. it, and uh, I think that shows through in the music, but it's, 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 it's fascinating to see everything could sort of spider out in that way. Uh, and, and so, okay, so let's go, let's get back to versus. We haven't talked enough about that. Um, the, the fellow from uh Cabaret Voltaire, uh, uh, Steven, right? Steven, Steven Malander. Yeah. Did you, did you know Cabaret Voltaire back in the day? Yes. Yes. And the thing is, because we were breaking through quite early, like I'm saying, when we were playing, uh, you know, different gigs around England, other bands. I mean, Trent Reznor came, he gave me a cassette a gig in Dallas with Pretty Hate Machine written on it, you know, the, from his bedroom or something. But Amazing. the same things happened, you know. Suddenly yeah. we were getting tapes of, from Cabaret Voltaire, from the Gang of Four, from Fast Records, because we had an office, you know. We were like all, all la -dee da for a moment. And we were doing, you know, and I did this Amnesty International uh, big benefit thing we found out that nico was in in in, in on hard times got nico over from france the bill was nico linton crazy johnson cabaret voltaire you know we were doing gigs with the gang of four with the slits and stuff so yeah and and over the years mally and i did something with richard and i've got another track i was working on with richard as well but mally is like a really he, he could almost be like my brother Right. And Eric, right, who's really close to the to the Eric Random is really close to the cabs and you know the whole he's he's like Mr. Manchester, right? You know, it's 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 lovely just that everybody that people aren't messed up and we're still as funny and, and having a laugh when we see each other at gigs and stuff as we as we as we did back then, you know. And you have that shared commonality of experience too. Right? Well, there was something really serious between me personally, maybe not the other pop group members, but me personally and with Richard and Mally, with the whole Burroughs going into Research Magazine, going into Cyberpunk, that whole, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a crappy Research. word to use now, wow. but back then wow. that dystopian ballard sort of take on things, you know, and, and reading a lot of sort of, you know, science prediction, not science fiction. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, fiction is arguable. I mean, half of the Philip K. Dick Well, my dad was a uh... scientist, and in the in the 1950s, you had this wave of British sci-fi, right? Brian Aldiss and Michael Moorcock and stuff. Oh, and sure. my dad's yeah. mates would read these sci-fi books and try and make them into reality. <laughs> As the template for how to... How to Real <laughs> how to idealist. Thing, yeah. I mean, God knows, you know, crazy. I was, I, it's funny you mentioned I was. I was just, I just watched Waking Life. Uh, the Linklater movie last night, and I forgot there was an extended bit about Philip K. Dick's uh, "Flow My Tears." The policeman said, and that you know the the, the story uh, goes that he ends up at a party like a year after he wrote it, and he meets a character that's basically the character from the book, and he meets that character, <laughs> that husband who's also a character in the book, and like so on like and so on. The Matrix. Yeah, but I, you even you think Linklater? There's so many words I can't tell you about that, but there's so, you're saying words. 
that have been said a couple of hours ago, or people I was just talking to about all sorts of weird things happening in this. It's another glitch in the matrix. <laughs> you are now entering the outer limits, yeah, my friend. Exactly. You know, we can we can choose your poison. Rod Serling can pop up too. We can Twilight Zone it. It's fine. Uh, but okay, so so I'm sorry. Let's get back to verses. I keep taking this back off track and putting this back on. So you got Stephen, you got Eric, and Eric uh, his um. He, he recorded a bunch of uh, solo stuff like in Sheffield, right? If I remember correct, I'm, I'm less familiar, but yeah. And what I really liked when Richard Kirk died, right, mm -hmm. was Stephen, the drummer from New Order and Joy Division, right? Right. They came out because I think what happened when when Ian uh, killed Ian Curtis killed himself, the other lads in Joy Division weren't really sure what to do, and they were friends with the Cabs, and they went up to their studio, Western Works, and they just started jamming. And I think Richard and Malley really just encouraged them to to be who they wanted to be without any, you know. Yeah. And, and Stephen said, if it wasn't for Richard H. Kirk, we wouldn't have got to where we were going, you know. That's crazy, because I mean, that's because that's one of the great rebirth stories of rock and roll, I think, personally. Um, you know, like, to have such tragedy and have such <laughs> just to be so brought low and to come back with something that you bring some hope to it and, and kind of takes it as entirely. And you've got direction. to think, you've got to think of what the person would want, you know, cause I'm helping yes. I'm, uh, another friend of mine was this kind of theorist writer. Uh, he wrote capitalist realism, Mark Fisher. And I'm trying to help <laughs> like, I know it well. film, get, a, get a film together, help them get a film together on. And you just got to think, and another guy who, who was friends with Jeffrey Lee Pierce got me and Nick Cave and Blondie and Iggy and stuff to finish off some of Jeffrey's songs. And if, you know, death is not the end. Do, do you know what I mean? You yeah. can't just stop and, you know, it's this way that people, I don't know. And I don't know what, you know, I question grief. Grief is a sort of selfish thing. You've just got a kind of, I don't know. I've got, it's, it's very Western, isn't it? You know, I don't, you know, Western guilt, Western grief. Western Western values mean nothing. <laughs> Putting on my best, Gary. Do you know what I mean? It's like I you, do. you just think what 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 the person would have wanted or what you want. You can't just freeze them. People. And the funny thing is, with music, you live on. You know. Yeah, and that's and why the... I want to finish off Mika's songs. Oh well, yeah. Can you can you, yeah exactly? Can you speak a little bit? I yeah, think that's and fascinating. He, bloody Lee Lee Perry died just as we. I was trying to make an album of nursery rhymes with him, and suddenly he's dead. Yeah, you know, as long as you clear the stuff with his estate and all the money goes in the right directions and stuff, you shouldn't. You know, I, I, it's not like I'm dining out on it. You know, <laughs> right, exactly. I didn't plan it just to just to promote the record. Ah, uh, yeah, absolutely, and and that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There, there's there would be much Rip easier Rip ways to Rip make Rip money. PR, <laughs> right? Howard's Howard's new title. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> oh, that's that's dark but hilarious, which is my favorite movie genre. <laughs> yeah. Uh so okay, so 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 can you speak a little bit to rip it up and start and start over again? The the documentary. Rip it up and start again. Well, basically what happened was Simon Reynolds, who was a a very good journalist, him and David Stubbs for the Melody Maker, right? You'd always, yeah. you know, they're covering really interesting stuff. He wrote a book called Start Rip It Up and Start Again about what came to be called post punk. Obviously, I'm unaware of when something's going on, you don't genre, genre size it, right? Right. Sounds You're like not thinking every, about a, a record bin to put it in at that moment. In time. Yeah. And I was, I was living in Vienna at the time, again, doing these weird sort of art things. And um, suddenly, like, I was knocking about with some sort of younger bands and this guy called Christopher Just. Anyway, the Electro Clash was kicking off or something. And there was a band called Adult, who I really liked, yes. who kept on playing. I love Adult. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Great, great band. Um, yeah. yeah. And um, anyway, so, but suddenly these younger bands, really younger bands, sort of would come over and start chatting to me. And I thought, and, and, and start sort of asking me questions about stuff from years ago, right? And I, when I was always, you know, me, I'm always trying to be the latest, the new kid on the block. Right, right, tough. Right. <laughs> but have you heard the latest thing? Exactly. We all we all feel that way. You know? <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Great. And, that's uh, that's awesome. That was a lifetime thought, ago. <laughs> how come, I said to them, I look at them up and down. They didn't even have Doctor Martin's on. I said, how come they're dressed in Yoji Yamamoto or something? I said, how come you know about this stuff? And they had um, Simon's book hanging out, hanging out of their pocket. So it it created this whole new 
window, if you like, you know, sure. that people were looking at me through, if you think of yourself as a zoo animal, right? And then Simon's my friend, and this German director, Tony Schiefer, was making a documentary about it, and he got Simon to talk about me or my influence or something in this book. And then Simon said, can you come and sit on this round table in Berlin? And anyway, I was aware, blah, 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 blah. A few, you know, a couple of years ago, an uh, American director guy hit me up and said, Mark, I'm making this film based on Simon's book. Um, we're going to be in, 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 in London. Can we chat to you? I said, yeah, sure. Not that, I, you know, not that I do a lot of interviews. And uh, anyway, I got on with them really well. And I said, you've got to talk to this person. You've got to talk to that person. I was talking to them earlier on. We're trying to set, um, fix them up with um, Laura Logic from Essential Logic, Linda from Ludus, na, 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 na. I hooked them up with Mally, right? Yeah, yeah. From the cab. Keith Devine, I'm trying to get him to talk to, who's a very good friend of mine. All sorts of different people, you know. Uh, you know. And um, so the film's coming along. and But just suddenly, I was going, look, why don't we push, you know, get a trailer ready me and Mally and Eric are, are doing this track. So it's like post-punk then, which yeah. is the film. Yeah, yeah. But post-punk now is us trying to like be DIY on the internet and, and with the same enthusiasm and, you know, and push the two things out together on the, in, on the, same, on the same arrow. Right, because that, that shows it's, it's more than just an exhibit at a museum. Exactly. Yeah, it shows more of a life ethos. Like this is a, you, and also that like it doesn't have to stop. It doesn't have to end. A life ethos. Totally. I love and that. And that kind of, and I've just thought about the title, Rip It Up and Start Again. It's exactly the same as, as me saying, Decondition Yourself and Faith is a Room for Doubt. And it comes from a song by Edwin Collins that Dennis Pavel produced for Orange Juice. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's the whole point, you know. And, and there's another word, mesthetics, which I quite like, or plunder phonics, that whole thing of trying to, you know, having a, having a printing set. You know, we're doing these limited, nobody could make any vinyl. So we've worked out how to get a lathe cut homemade. You know, we're really pushing against the pricks, as Nick said, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, and you're dealing with the same hassles that that everyone is. Like, you know, like the, suppl yeah. the supply chain doesn't care how much punk rock cred you have. But I think it's really important, whatever and what anybody, and I think everybody should have a right to question or see things as, you know, you know, anybody, but I, whatever, whatever was going on and whatever is going on, I just thought it was really important to just try and make some anchor points and keep on doing stuff that we're still flying a flag. And if we can't do stuff live, we're going to go online and do it, or we're going to do stuff. You know, when they said, when they said we can't do, <coughs> there's a waiting for vinyl. I said, well, let's do little cassettes with little fanzine and a bag like we used to back in the day, you know, yes. yeah, anything yeah. to keep and to keep the small little record shops going in Greece and Belgium. Those places are hubs. Those people, that's where my mind was blown. And it still happens, right? You know, just because <laughs> and, and of course those places are, are, are crucial for, for 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 the for the for the world. You know, I'm just reading the stuff about is that uh, film Beijing Bubble, whatever it is, about the punk rock scene in, in, in China. All these little towns with like mad punk rock. You know, it's, it's incredible the way heavy yeah. Iranian heavy metal bands. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's, it's incredible. 100%. I'm not talking about those countries as if there's, you know, it's weird. Everywhere where it's got, I just saw these Tibetan guys, like just a flute and, and some sort of banging drum. And they were like the Sleaford Mods in this freezing just in some yard. You know? <laughs> right, exactly. Exactly. Because you, cause you find a way. You find a way. Well, and, and on that, uh, of, of full disclosure, a friend of mine, but uh, former guest of the show, John Yingling does these documentaries called The World Underground that, that's literally just like, hey, did you ever think about what like the punk rock scene in communist China is? Well, here you go. It looks right. like this. Here's what they have to deal with. Here's how badly they want to do it. And here's yeah. like what they will go through to, and it, it's astounding to me. I mean, it's just, it's beautiful in its yeah. way. Yeah. Uh, so okay, so that so that's that's fantastic, and I've seen the trailer. Uh, it's awesome. It, it's I'm I'm very excited to see that. I think that's going to be a, lo a lovely time. Uh, but I love the idea that it isn't just here. And the whole point is that it's not nostalgia. It's not it's just nostalgia. Far away. Right? Anybody can do it. That was the whole point of punk. Yes, the audience were as important as the people on the stage. You know, it's that breaking the breaking the frame, breaking the narrative. Anybody can do it. DIY. 
what, what's the Watt thing? The Mike Watt thing he says uh, about take taking turns, like being on the same Don't level. It's all your own, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, it, and it's uh, God. That's <sighs> yeah, that's great. And, and that's one of the reasons why when when people adopt certain styles of music as a genre and, and they think of it as a genre, it's like no, it's more of a lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> for some of us anyway like it's it's more of a way you think of things and it can be like you know you're talking well, the life sentence mate <laughs> <laughs> fair uh but you're talking about things like you know uh you what know, is it now what are those things you put in the, the elon that you put in your neck what are they called those elon musk things oh yeah yeah <laughs> i forget what they're i know what you're talking about though yeah yeah uh, by the way i love when that dude i think uh, they did that to me i think one of my mates had a lobotomy i think they did something to us it was something in the water I love that that dude debuted his future card and basically looked like something from a RoboCop or something too. I was, yeah. I was like, "What did? Yeah. did are, are you having a laugh here? Like, what's happening?" <laughs> okay, future card looks like RoboCop. Sure. Um, we talk about retro futurism, right? Uh, but anyway, uh, okay. So I want to get back to and and, and knowing that so the time is recording, uh, the records on out yet. It's coming out April eighth. CD digital download and streaming platforms. We mentioned at the, at the outset. You have KK Null on here, which is astounding. Um, you got, you know, uh, Hand Sonic. KK Null, KK Null, and Mike Watts. Oh, and we're doing way. a version of a Grant Hart song. I love it. All of my, which is the most. I mean, tell me anything in the world that is weird. Have I not got the weird, the, the weird crown on now? Can I be crowned the weirdest? That you've I, ever had. I, I mean, look, if you were, I mean, it, that's not an offer. I mean, I'm not trying to chat you up or anything. No, no. If I was your target audience, you have hit the mark, sir. Like, if if Kona <laughs> Neutron's Protonic Reversal was your target you audience, that is, you this are. is it's one on one. I'm trying to sell each individual person. I'm, <laughs> I'm phoning people at random across the world trying to get them to buy a record. <laughs> that's basically what it's going to come down to. I think at a certain point, yeah, Don't sell. yeah, yeah. <laughs> door to door, the fuller brush salesman, but with records. an insulation for your home and some solar. Power. Excuse me, sir. Do you like Zini Giva? How about the Minutemen? You know, all right. Um, but but it's not your, it, your bank details, <laughs> right? Exactly. Can you just just quickly uh, give me it's give me your subscription, crypt, your crypto wallet? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, uh, okay, back on track. But you have also have like Pansonic. It's on there. You know, consolidated. Um, I, I mean, this this is a. Again, it's it's not like a, a that's two for two. I mean, for, yeah, exactly, that yeah. Would be outstanding. Uh, I had a lot of time in Belgium back in the day. The crazy thing about and front two four two, their their early stage looked all about Robocop. They had the whole, they looked like those police in Ottawa today, right? They had the whole <laughs> like black outfits on the boots, yeah. those little things that Janet that Janet Jackson got later on those weird little microphones, you know. I, even if, if if they only started body popping, I mean, they had the look. Right. <laughs> Absolutely, they've got the look. Well, and and you got uh, Lee's on there. And there was something going on. Hang on, sorry, there was something going on in Belgium, right? Uh -huh. And <clears throat> I've never found. We, so you do a gig, right? And then you go to some. You know, I I often went to some sort of like weird hotel bar. I don't want to go. I always want to go somewhere different. In Tokyo, I'd go to a city. A city pop bar or a body car. I'd always go somewhere different. You know, that's how I end up hearing different things. And uh, so I kept on being in these sort of hotel bars in, in, in Belgium and hearing this mixture of really good music, like sort of dancey electronic music, with a sort of guy sort of crooning in a sort of post punk way over the top. And I could never find out who, because a barman would never know, or the barman would never know what it was. Ages later on, I found out that it was called AB Sound. There was a famous club there called Ancien Belgique, the Tuxedo Moon a lot of people used to play, we played in, right? But there was a DJ there that just played this certain kind of sound of often sort of Belgian and, and bands developed around it. It's really interesting. I think the only thing to break out was Baloui Sum. And then a bit later, I was in I was in Rotterdam or Nijmegen or something, and I went to this other club, and it was the beginning of Rave. It was yeah. this really fast Dutch high energy music. It was crazy. Yeah, would you hear? And then after a gig in Metro in Chicago, I just got in a cab and said, "Take me somewhere." Took me to this weird lounge bar, and DJ Pierre was doing one of the first acid tracks sets. Oh, Mad. Wow. I mean, so when you, so 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 Mark, when you when you're in these moments and these things are and these are happening, you're hearing this for the first time. Do you know you're like, 
oh wow that's something special like is it does it hit no. differently no no and it's because i don't think treat things as special you know i don't got it that's the thing i don't think anything for me people say what's it like being on stage i was going to the same as just being in the supermarket just now you know being in the dentist i mean obviously with this record but um <laughs> <laughs> I don't see it as special. Something comes back, it's stored somewhere, and I bring it back up in my palate to be a bit arty. You know, no, I don't. Obviously, if you get a tingle down your spine, like a shaka, I don't know how to explain it, but all sorts of things are special. You know, middle of the road stuff is special sometimes. I was just listening to Matt Monroe. You know, who knows? Johnny Ray, you know. It's a juxtaposition. It's putting it's putting things together that shouldn't be put together. Right, That's right. where the spark or the mutations happen. When when did when did you first encounter Lee Scratch Perry? Uh, basically, no, the, knowing that you're not a time of time and dates. I was guy. born just <laughs> after the skinheads time, and my brother was a suede head, and the skinheads and the suede heads danced to reggae, right? And they played, probably, right? I think, one of maybe the pioneers or Lick Shock Keep the Bucket, one of Lee's vocal band things. The, the ski. Oh. oh, Ghost in the Machine. Mark, did we lose you? Sorry. Okay, okay. all good. Wait, maybe. <laughs> Keep going. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so. Yeah, so to set the scene, right? Like there, there's the, these. We'll charitably call them very white music. In some cases, very, very, very white music. And what I would imagine is they're probably, probably not a co-ed experience. I would imagine, but I would imagine that uh, the the reggae, the dub shows, probably by the very nature of the music would be a little more inclusive and a little more. Um... No, no, no. Skinheads. They were black skinheads. The first skinheads. It wasn't, they were, the skinheads in England, it was just a working class thing. It came out of the mods. So they were exactly. Asian, black. It was, it was a fashion thing. It was not, 1968, 1969, they dressed up in two tonic suits and stuff. Nothing to do with what you know as skinheads now. Right, right. Yeah. And I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to characterize it that way. That was not my intention. But yeah, it's, but to, but to set the scene, uh, this, this is before, I mean, I don't know. Has, has it been mainstreamed? No, but it was, still was considered as, as punk rock was. Consider no, reggae was in the charts, right? But there's a really funny film on 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 YouTube, a documentary about uh, Delroy Wilson or something about these Jamaican guys cutting all these skinhead moonstone, cutting all these songs for this. It was like a cargo cult for an audience. They didn't even know really understand what they looked like or what they drank or whatever. And some guy comes over and does a gig up north in like 1970 or something. They just couldn't understand. It's the most bizarre thing. It's like being suddenly me having a hit. And going playing to like Barney's monkey dancing right. ceremony. Do you know what I mean? Well, because it's it's from Mars. If you've never heard it before, right? It's it's like yeah. I've never heard. Why why does that sound like that? Right? Like why does it like the even things? I'm thinking about things like and the audience was was from Mars to them, right? And I'm thinking of things like slowing down the tempo, right? Or like slowing down like the, yeah. the the. And I just heard we mm -hmm. just did this documentary on Lee. That he, Lee was was really into 1970s British sitcoms, which are hilarious, you know. And he'd watch them, and you can hear them under these. I mean, the guy. I'm sorry, but you know, he for me is more important than anybody like Salvador Dali. It's beyond music. He's an incredible artist. I mean, a pioneer, right? I mean, like yeah. think think about. The fact that you know, not only did, did he uh, did he work with like Bob Marley and like the Clash, but like the Beastie Boys, Orb. I yeah. mean, like <laughs> this is a guy that he didn't he never stopped. And his art is incredible. The video that we made for Alpha and the first the first issue of Alpha, the money went to Alpha Boys School in Jamaica, which took kids off the street and taught them music. And some some of the best Jamaican music musicians came from them. Please donate to them. Um, the video is my bomb uh, collaborator, Peter Harris, also collaborated with Lee, right? And right. The, the the paintings they were doing together, we've kind of animated them for the video for this Alpha single. I mean, th there's some film of Lee in the in the in the in the um, in the studio making these artworks, right? And I've, I've seen him do it in Adrian's garden. He just picks up a pebble and gives it and makes it like a votive offering. It's like in one of those classic old kung fu films when somebody kind of gives you a bamboo reed, you know. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Oh wow, fantastic. I love that. That's a He's the closest thing to a biblical prophet, you know. Yeah, he seems like he'd just be a fascinating dude, right? Like top to bottom. Like he just seems like he would be 
have wisdom from beyond the ages or something. This is my nature yeah. I've always done. And yeah. Always. Yeah. But I think music somehow does that. It's and it's not to do with the ego of the musician. If 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 somehow with especially with music because of the resonance and I think you know even to do with the way they built cathedral. There's something about is it beta frequencies or something? There's something like there's something about music that even if little kids drumming or running around in circles that you can. I don't know if, know if the words transcend because I don't know if it's better or worse than what, you know, it's, it's, it's a, and I don't even like to use the word mystical because I feel mystical 24 seven, but it's like, it's <laughs> sure yeah. something, it's a, it's a key. Yeah. And then, so, okay. So then let's go back to verses and let's go back to how does the collab with, with Lee start? And also for the, for those well, somehow. So that I have this idea. Yeah. I think is it, is it Raymond Scott? Right? Uh, yeah, yeah. That sort of mood, sort of theremin guy in the uh, 1950s. The you're talking about the composer, right? The one that was the yeah. Uh, he, yeah, yeah. he did a children's album. That's right. That's right. He did the like the was it the clavivox sort of things, and right? the uh, um, uh, uh, electronium, I think it's called something, yeah. something like that. Like it's I, all these weird. weird I just had this idea. I mean, people were doing these weird sort of dark side of the dark side of the dub, or right? they were doing these sort of dub albums, which were like things in dub. And I just thought that men of a certain age, you know, when all women, when when you, the, your other half starts tidying away your music or you're not allowed to have all your vinyl out or whatever, you know, you can't have your motorbike in the middle of the room anymore because the <laughs> kids will trip up. You can't have yeah, yeah. Uh, you can't have the thick motorbike all over your all over your knives and forks because you've been using them as you know screwdrivers. But um, <laughs> I just thought Lee's voice. I got him to do London Bridges Falling Down. I was thinking about Ring of Ring of Roses and whatever. Lee's voice, right? And I was, maybe I was going to work with Adrian or Scientist on it as well and some great musicians. Just like a, a nursery rhyme record for kids that parents could like play in the car and they'd like it as well. And it's an excuse to like, do you know what I mean? I think, yeah. it, would, I think it would do all right. Yeah. And we were, I was even talking to some like make some minor work in kids TV. I mean, kids TV is wide open, you know. Anyway. Well, and I feel like there's just like, Every once in a while, there's an opportunity for the weirdos to do some cool, weird stuff. That I feel like that's happening. Not in children's television. There, no, no. They're, what, well, yeah, the weirdos. Yeah, I know who the weird. They're on twenty four. Yeah, the, yeah. Weird, the weirdos are the ones that run it all. Well, yeah, weird. yeah. We're not, weird. We're not weird. Don't let them tell you that. You know what? That's a very good point, and I'm 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 going to take the point, and I'm going to agree with that. That exactly. Why are Why are we the weird ones? Yeah, no, of course not. <laughs> The sooner the, the sooner the better that the people who supposedly think they're mar marginalized or weird rally together and realize they're the ninety nine percent or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Everybody's a bit anyway. It's I mean I, I noticed it started yeah. happening in commercials as much as I don't like sit here and study commercials or anything. But in the last ten years, it was like oh they're taking like this weird Dada esque David Lynchian turn sometimes and 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 like oh. it. For just advertise like some advertise at least in America. I don't know if that's the, the 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 case there, but it's like oh, not that that's a sign of progress necessarily, but it's like oh, it, it's a sign of something for sure. Yeah. Uh, okay, so nursery rhymes. So so Lee Scratchberry, like kind of the same idea with the the Raymond Scott thing, right? And and why not, right? Because this this is a record where it, it seems like. The ethos is let's do cool stuff to me. Like, it doesn't seem like there's like a, a unifying thing. To well, the, there, yeah, right? yeah, the ethos is this is Mark's mixtape. Yeah, it plays like a mixtape. Is publish and be damned. If you don't like it, stick it. <laughs> and it plays like a mixtape. No, the, the reason the Romans, when they took over England, they didn't get up past Hadrian's Wall to Scotland is us picks tore off all our bear skins, covered ourselves in excrement, and ran at them. And that's what I'm doing with this record, dude. <laughs> you heard it here first. Mark Stewart covering himself <laughs> in excrement. Tranquilizers <laughs> to stop me doing a, a follow-up. <laughs> uh, okay, so, and, and I'm really excited for the world here. I think it's I think it's interesting. I think, I think it's a cool record, and I, I am stoked about that documentary, too. It's going to be awesome. I realize I'd be remiss if I didn't at least we, we talked about Y and Dub, but we didn't. We, we we glanced on Citizen Zombie and Honeymoon on Mars, and I think those are interesting. 
those yeah. are interesting records. And I wouldn't, I, I'd, I'd feel like I wouldn't quite be getting the job done if we didn't, uh, didn't talk about those. Uh, because well, the pop, group, the pop group, the pop group are not going anywhere. Right. right. And one of the things during lockdown, Terry Hall from the specials, right. Was curating. It was Coventry city of culture. Like those all tomorrow's parties. He was choosing stuff he was into. Sure. Right. And he got, he, he said to me, he said, Mark, can you do, can you, uh, can you do something? Right. And, you know, the specials were really into reggae as well. Coventry had a big, a big reggae and dub scene like we had in Bristol. And so we did Y and Dub Live with Dennis fixing it, which was really, really interesting, right? It was one of the only gigs that survived for the cancellation because it was like they had some sort of government art backing. So we, we did it, you know, which was right. amazing. One of the first just before Christmas in Coventry. It was amazing. It was it was in the it was in the ruins of the bombed Coventry Cathedral. I mean it it was so cathartic wow. to us, you know. I'm sure, yeah. How could it not be? <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. So, so you know, so I've got a couple of strings in my bow at the moment. I've got, <coughs> and we're doing a big on you sound celebration next um, in April. Taked are coming over. You know, we got the whole New York Jamaican posse. You know, we're doing Mark Street Mafia, Taked African Head Charge, Horace Andy. Adrian's just made a big horror. So. There's a few different teams in my league, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I do, yes, exactly. That, that's... I feel a little bit like that Damon Alban. I've got the Gorillas, you know, Blur. Right. <laughs> oh, this, this is my Blur record. Oh, clearly, yeah. <laughs> now, but that's... Pop, but this is my Baroque pop opus. Yeah, yeah. No, that's <laughs> that's not an analogy I would expect, but strings. I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, so, okay. Uh, so, so, so about. And again, I'm not trying to nostalgia train at all, but I just think that Citizen Zombie and Honeymoon on Mars, those are both great records that I think those are worthwhile records, even if you don't know how much longer do we tolerate mass murder and why, right? Like they 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 stand on their own. They they stand as their own records. And that you right. talked about when you guys reconvened, it wasn't like, hey, let's do like a big let's let's cash the check and make a big nostalgia train thing. The idea was let's make let's be a band, let's make some music. Yeah. What and what I'm driving at with all this is, you know, you, you mentioned that you, you immediately get into the, uh, you know, whether you call it busting balls, taking the piss, however you want to call it, and, and like th that side of it. But you call away lightly, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the, uh, like when you start creating it, you know, it's informed, you're very different people. You're, you're, you're grown men, right? You're not kids anymore, and you have a lifetime of experience behind it. I so am. Don't grow up as a trap. <laughs> I've got my adult baby in. I'm my adult baby syndrome. I'm, I'm in an oversized trap. Right, right. At, at least uh, in age, if not in mind. Uh, but I think that it, it, to me, uh, and where I'm going with this is, I, I feel like you, you've not lost any of the the wonder Spot. and possibility. Wonder, yeah. Wonder is what keeps me going in life. I've got. I was just writing a song called Wonderlust. The sense of wonder. Is beautiful. Prince Farai had had this song. Sometimes I wonder. Sometimes I ponder. Wonder is 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 again. It's resonance to me. It's it's beauty. It's yeah. Wonder, wonder and hope. You know. Yeah, and and I and I I just think back to because as you might imagine, a lot of musicians listen to this show, and uh, you know I think that stuff resonates. And when you when you blaze a trail that way. And you follow your own compass to where you want to go. I think there's merit to that, and I think this is not a world that that rewards that necessarily immediately, certainly not financially. Uh, but I think the rewards are inherent in and of themselves. And I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if you feel the same way. You would know more about it than I do, uh, since you've been doing it a lot longer and have a longer body of work. But I, I think it shows through. Like it, 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 all the stuff that you do sounds very exciting. It sounds like you're excited about it. You're hitting it full force, and you know I feel like that there's I something, can't do said. anything else, mate. I cannot do anything else. Yeah. I've tried. <laughs> well, and why I'm should you to be normal? <laughs> yeah, why should you? You know, why? I just end up getting punched. Hey, what are you going to be a greeter at Walmart? I mean, yeah, like, <laughs> like that's a, you know why should you? It's it's you you've done so much over the years and 
there's this mutual exchange where where people that are inspired by things that you have done have come back and have also made something great, right? I mean that that's that's a contribution to culture, and, and it's not something that's rewarded unless you're famous. I feel personally, but you know, like your reward is you get to be on Protonic Conversal with Kona Neutron and. <laughs> Oh, thank you. It's all been worth it. <laughs> it was all leading up to tonight, wasn't it? Uh, <laughs> it's infamous. Uh, but uh, but I think <laughs> well, and and uh, there's there's so much more that we could talk about. I, I want to be uh, respectful of, of your time for it. But it just occurs to me that I'm glad there's going to be a documentary that not only shows the museum of that stuff but again it's in the title right i've got it here the museum of forgotten futures <laughs> that's great yeah <laughs> rip it up and start again you know that that's yeah. that's beautiful I, I i love that i think a lot of people that that um pay attention to the show i think that's one of the problems in the world as well since whatever the enlightenment whatever it was somebody said oh this is an idea that wasn't necessarily proven with medicine or with logic or whatever or with you know, science or plants, and everybody started trundling off on something which was already built on sand, which hadn't been proven. Yeah, that's heavy. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's I guess that's true, right? You have to, nobody knows what's on the map until you go there. Or just creating something absolutely new that hasn't, that's not covered in cobwebs. Yeah, yeah, and that's, I think, you know, personally, I feel like there's value in that in and of itself, but uh, it, can, it seems like it can be a lonely road a lot of times. So, uh, well, not for me. <laughs> no, no, it seems like you're doing great with it. Uh, anyway, sorry, I'm, I'm turning this into well, a therapy the whole point session. With us but... is we did it, I, I chose to make music as a social thing. I was, you know, I was gonna, right. I was gonna be a writer or just. Wait a second. Mark, you still there? Oh, we couldn't speak to each other, but we shared some, we, you know, we shared some food together. Music is the most social social of all of all jobs, I believe. I would agree. And I think that that's, well, I'm thinking about it this way, right? You've made all these records that also are records that you could play at a party and people can be social too. I have literally been yeah. to a party where, uh, where, where that has happened. And it was like, and you always get some person like, Oh, what's this? This is good. You know, but then some people, Lovely. some people are just having a good time dancing, having a chat, you know, <laughs> they, 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 yeah. it's fine. But they, they don't care about the particulars. And that's also fun. I think also that there's something to be said for the mutual exchange of inspiration too. Right. Like you, you, you've been very good about name checking bands that you're into, that you find interesting, cool, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I like that when folks such as yourself that have such a story discography and such incredible history behind them still take the time to be a fan. I'm a fanboy. I always have been, always will be. And I promise you, by benefits, band <laughs> there's a riff it on the market if you spend any money if you've already got enough money to buy one thing this month don't buy me buy that <laughs> that's that's an that's an astounding uh endorsement and, and i love it uh so okay so last thing so first of all i i want to be mindful of why is coming out again the time of this recording it, it's not out yet that's early april uh go get it, it it's it's very interesting uh, you got, the videos are out. The Perry videos out. The the trailer for ripping yep. up the Cross No Shadows sound is out. You know, we'll, we'll we'll throw all those those various links into the show notes so folks can check it out without having to think without having to think too hard about it. Uh, is there is there anything else that uh, you got? I mean, you're a busy man. Anything else you got going on that you want to want to mention on the show? I think that's enough for today. I think that's enough too. <laughs> but uh, you know, hey, you never know. You're a bit like I said. You're a busy well, I've fella. Got, I've got a. I've, Mark, oh, lost you for a second. Damn it! This is that was this is we were closing out too. <laughs> Mark, still there? Loud coach, or instead of hope coach, coach, loud coach. Gotcha. I, I I caught like maybe two two seconds of that. So can you can you? I said me? I've got a clothing line. If you if, oh. if, if you've got another. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> See, but the thing is, it sounds like it could be true. Uh, so, so Mark, I, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show, spending so much time with me. This has been great, and I really appreciate it. There's one 
can question that I ask at the end of the show. Uh, you can choose to interpret it however you like. But why do you do what you do? You froze. You have to say it again. <laughs> okay, so it's the only canned question I ever ask. Why do you do what you do? Uh, I could ask you the same question. <laughs> <laughs> that that I'm hearing all these voice the archaic the archaic the, the archaic records telling me to stop now. I wish you'd never. All right, I'll, I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> is it is it that annoying? Is it? <laughs> Skinner, the gangs used to come up to me and say, uh "Oh, yeah, I think I think they think I think your connections." Reason I don't know if that's me or you. Uh, it's all good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's. Yeah. If you if you want to answer that, that's great. Otherwise, Mark, it's been a pleasure, man. Thank you. Why so do much. I do what I do? Because you you have to give something back to the planet, don't you? You indeed you do. Indeed you do. Mark Stewart, thank you so much, sir. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Pleasure. I'm gonna I'm gonna go listen to the bloody record now. Not that I have, not that I needed to. <laughs> Take it easy, everybody, and, and stay tuned to this show. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. There he goes, Mr. Mark Stewart. What a cool guy. That was awesome. Uh, let's listen to a uh, pop group. Uh, actually, you know what? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's listen to Pop Group. I'll, I'll put it in later in the. Uh... All right. 
we shall be well, all right. That was uh other than the legendary Mark Stewart. Uh fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> we never talked about Mark Stewart in the Mafia. Damn. <laughs> well, I'll just have to have him come back next time. Uh, that the uh, verses. That's the name of the new record. The uh, we'll call it, call it the Mark Stewart mixtape, right? Why wouldn't we call it that? And that's gonna be April something. April April. It's in April. Notes page is being overrun here. But uh, yeah, go get that. That's going to be, um, it's got, you know, Lee Scratch Ferry, Front Row for uh, the guy from 2242, Mike Watt, Pansonic, KK Null, Consolidated, the fella, uh, Stephen from uh, Cabaret Voltaire. Uh, anyway, it's interesting stuff. And then also Rip It Up and Start Again, directed by Nicholas Katranis and Russell Craig Richardson. Coming out soon. There's a trailer for that. That'll be in the show notes. Hey, this has been Kona Neutron's Protonic Reversal. Thanks so much for listening to it. This show airs usually Thursdays, <laughs> Eastern, 7 Central, 6 Mountain, 5 Pacific. Uh, Radionope.com, also streaming Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, all of those things. Archives available for free, always. Protonicreversal.com, all of them. No ads, no sponsors, no kidding. If you like the show and you want to get episodes sooner, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash protonic reversal. One dollar a month will get you there. It also supports the show. And that's uh that's a nice thing. Thanks for folks liking and subscribing on the YouTube, Twitch, all that business. Your your podcast app of choice. It's appreciated. It's how people find the show, like sharing it around. Anyway, stay safe out there. Out on Route 128, it's dark and lonely. And take it easy. I got my radio on. Can you hear me now?